Welcome to week number three of the Lent Experience. There are two basic types of massage. There's the stress relief, just make me feel good and relaxed while I'm in there kind of massage. Then there's the deep tissue, therapeutic, get in there and fix me kind of massage. The first one is comfortable. The second one, well, not always so enjoyable. I get a therapeutic massage regularly because it resolves real issues in my body. The therapist finds areas that aren't right, then stays there, applies the appropriate amount of pressure, and I squirm a bit, but in the end, I'm healthier and my body functions better. I don't always look forward to going into the massage room, but I always feel better coming out. Have you figured out yet where this analogy is going? Repentance is the spiritual equivalent of a deep tissue massage and it's this week's Lent experience challenge. I believe in thinking positive thoughts, but I don't believe in the power of positive thinking. I'm not whatever I think I am. I am what I am. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made by God and created in his image. I'm dearly loved by my heavenly father. I'm saved only by his grace. And I am marred by sin. I have a sinful nature. I don't live out his image. That is what he created me for perfectly. Sometimes I get it right. Other times I get it wrong. There's sin in me and there's sin all around me. It affects me from the inside and from the outside. Now one day, everything will be perfect and we will not contend with sin anymore. Sin and death have ultimately been defeated on the cross and one day, all believers in Jesus will enjoy his second coming and the sinless perfection of his everlasting kingdom. That's why repentance is such a wonderful thing. It's the primary way we deal with the reality of our sin in our world, and in our lives. It's a gift from God. We can honestly talk to God about it and find forgiveness and grace and mercy and course correction. When we identify the areas and allow the appropriate amount of what I'll call God pressure to be applied, it may be uncomfortable at first, but there's healing and restoration that comes with it. Okay, I think I've taken the analogy about as far as it can be useful. Here's the truth. Repentance resolves real issues in my life. The primary issue it solves is the relational issue that sin creates between me and my Heavenly Father. I'd like to read a portion of 1 John to you and then you'll be ready to engage in your Lent experience challenge for the week. Your challenge is to carve out a 30 minute block of time to spend on repentance. Your participant journal has a few more thoughts about confessing sin and repentance and includes a very specific and easy to follow template that you can follow to spend your 30 minutes. First John, we proclaim to you the one who existed from the beginning, whom we have heard and seen we saw him with our own eyes and touched him with our own hands. He is the word of life. This one who is life itself was revealed to us and we have seen him. And now we testify and proclaim to you that he is the one who is eternal life. He was with the Father and then he was revealed to us. We proclaim to you what we ourselves have actually seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us and our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that you may fully share our joy. This is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you, God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. So we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practicing the truth. But if we are living in the light, as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, 
cleanses us from all sin. If we claim we have no sin, we're only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. If we claim we have not sinned, we're calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. My dear children, I'm writing this to you so that you will not sin, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the one who is truly righteous. He himself is the sacrifice that atones for our sins, and not only our sins, but the sins of all the world.